Number five on this list is Halstatt Karner. Halstatt Karner is one weird church man, let me tell you. I'm all about unique and cool decorations, but human body parts? Kind of where I draw the line, guys. Discovery.com says, Many bone churches and ossuaries are decorated with femurs and pelvises, but at Halstatt Karner, these skulls themselves are decorated. More than 600 of the skulls on display in this Ben House, also known as Bone House in English, bear their former owners' names, professions, and the date of their death. Many are also adorned with decorative garlands and flowers. But perhaps what makes this bone church stand out the most is the fact that the most recent remains to be interred here belong to a woman who passed away in 1983 after having requested the Bain House as her final resting place. What's more, she might not be the last because the church is still open to receiving similar requests. So yeah, the dark secret here is that there is literal bones still being added. 1983 is really not that long ago when you think about it, and like the article suggests, that's probably not the last person to have been thrown into this array of skeletons. I guess it isn't, but it feels like this should be illegal or something. At the very least, it's just super weird. Like, why is a bunch of dead bodies and bones and stuff bringing anyone closer to God? Isn't the whole point of church to connect with your spiritual side? Not get grossed out by a bunch of dead people who you might have even known at one point. The church is located in Austria and has got to be one of the scariest churches in that country for sure. Unless you want your bones to be added to some religious display, I would stay away from this place. Coming in at number 4 we have St. Mary the Virgin, England. In an English village you'll find the church of St. Mary the Virgin, built around 1350 just outside the main settlement. The church in Clophill, Bedfordshire was abandoned for around 170 years after it fell into disuse in the 1840s. There are a few other things about this ancient little church, the most significant being that it was supposedly built facing the wrong direction. Churches are traditionally oriented to face east, the direction from which the sun rises, which in the Christian religion is associated with the location of heaven and the return of the Messiah. Churches are positioned with the altar facing east so people will pray in that holy direction. Some have claimed that because St. Mary the Virgin Church faces away from God, it thus opens its doors to hell. Indeed, the church has a long history of reported haunting and supposed satanic rituals. The 14th century church was reportedly used for satanic rituals in the 1960s. As rumor has it, bones were dug up and arranged in satanic patterns. Paranormal investigator has speculated that some kind of black magic was performed at a church in Clophill, making it one of the most haunted places in Bedfordshire. The investigator explained that there's definitely something strange going on at the church, and this personal view is that it's down to black magic practices held there. He explains that he has also had many people confess the terrifying experience that they've had with the church. One filmmaker told the investigator that he saw a dark shape that was extremely tall coming towards him. The filmmaker and his colleague ran when he felt something grab his arm, even though he couldn't see anything. Once police arrived to the scene, instead of laughing the claim off, they congested that they've spent a lot of time guarding the abandoned site, as many people experienced the same thing. Over the years, many people have reported seeing strange things near the church, from mysterious hooded monks to tall dark figures. In at number 3 we have Egg Hill Church, Spring Hills, Pennsylvania. Considered one of the most haunted churches known to man, we have Egg Hill Church in Spring Hill, Pennsylvania. The church was built in 1860 and was out of use by the 1920s. The most well known story about Egg Hill Church is of the great number of people that supposedly lost their lives. This occurred at the turn of the century in the 1800s, when the pastor at the time ended the life of his whole congregation by poison and kept them in the nearby woods. Other stories say that the pastor only ended the life of the people of the parish. He reportedly would end their lives one by one under the mysterious circumstances and got away with it, until the day that he would be discovered where he would end his own life in the church. Some who have been to the church say they have seen drawings of pentagrams and goats appear on the walls and ceilings, written by some unknown entity. Others say that from outside the church you can hear strange noises coming from the inside when the church is locked up and supposedly empty. Some claim the sounds are similar to children's voices. Their
Therefore, there is no doubt that this haunted church has the potential to be cursed by the devil. In at number 2 we have a Cure Episcopal Church in Virginia. This church is said to be one of the most haunted churches in Virginia. Legend says that the church and the church graveyard, which has graves dating back to 1738, are both home to paranormal activity that has taken place for over 200 years. Even the early years of the church being opened were marked with tragedy. In the mid 18th century, a woman was hiding from a group of men within the church's walls and lost her life. Even more upsetting was the fact that she was not discovered until years later, when the church reopened after the Revolutionary War. No one knows exactly the details of the loss, yet there have been several claims of paranormal activity since. Her hair just as blonde as the day she lost her life. At that time, the church had lost funding due to the Revolutionary War, and that might have been the reason why no one discovered her body until later. Moreover, it's been said that blonde stains from the murder remained on the floorboards for nearly 100 years, till it was replaced all together with concrete. Many ghost stories worked their way through the community after the skeleton was discovered. Many parishioners refused to set foot in the church after dark. In the 1900s, people decided to seek evidence of hauntings for themselves. Many returned with chilling tales of having encountered an unfriendly presence. Built before the Civil War, this church is reportedly visited by the ghost of a soldier killed during the conflict. The most haunted part of the building is the church tower. Others claim that the reason for the haunting involves a young woman who was murdered there. The eerie lights and unexplained sounds are reason enough to stay away after dark. Even today, there is plenty of paranormal activity associated with the church grounds. Many visitors have reported hearing footsteps running through the graveyard accompanied by the sound of a violent struggle. Others claim to see the figure of a young golden haired woman peering from the balcony window. With all the tragedies and loss of lives that happen within the walls of this church, not to mention the paranormal activity, it's safe to assume that there is some evil spirits and energy cursing the church. And finally, in at number one, we have St. Colum Kyle, Ontario. Dating back to 1855, St. Colum Kyle Church was founded and located in the hamlet of Uptogrove. The original frame church was torn down, and the present brick edifice was constructed in 1905. This structure sits on a hill far back from the road and can easily be viewed when driving on Highway 12 east from Aurelia. The ghost stories have been spreading since over 100 years ago, classifying the church was haunted, and these tales have been circulated ever since. Today, the church is deemed haunted by some local residents and visitors. There have been many reports of ghost sightings, shadowy figures that will suddenly appear, creaking doors and eerie music that will play randomly from the organ. There have also been numerous reports of shadowy sightings of a figure wearing a black hat that floats through the quiet area, creating chills for those who had observed it. Mysterious candlelight has been seen flickering from the windows on stormy nights. Many believe the spirit responsible is that of a former priest who, according to legend, pledged to complete a specific number of sermons, though he lost his life before he was able to attain that number. Now some churchgoers say he is returning to fulfill that promise. Number 5 on this list is the Lady of Guadalupe Church. This church is located in New Orleans and is known to the locals as being one of the most haunted spots in the whole city. This location hasn't always acted as a place of worship, but for a long time was a chapel that you really didn't want to end up at. That's because, for the longest time, it was actually called the Old Mortuary Church. As I'm sure that you can probably guess, the crowd that entered this place wasn't the liveliest. In fact, using the word live to describe them is just flat out incorrect. New Orleans was hit hard many a time with epidemics, with yellow fever being especially bad. There were times during the city's history where the dead were too many to handle, and they had to go somewhere. Enter in the old mortuary church. Thousands upon thousands of bodies have went through these doors over the years. In fact, for the longest time, the only people this place saw were the pastors who were here and the countless dead. Everyday citizens were too scared to come here for fear of catching the disease and wouldn't even risk going to see their departed loved ones. Obviously, all this death has left its ghostly mark. Eventually, it was turned into a full-fledged church that people attend, but not before the spiritual damage had been done. Nowadays, the spirits of some of those who died during this harsh period in New Orleans history still haunt the area. Glowing orbs have been seen by those who frequent the church floating around at nighttime. Subtle and faint moans can be heard echoing throughout the walls, as if the moans themselves were wind blowing through the church. The ghost of a man has said to approach people from time to time claiming he needs help and that he was never sick to begin with. This is definitely one of those churches who's seen its fair share of tragedy over the years and it shows. 
However, believe it or not, it may not be the most haunted church in New Orleans, but more on that later. Number four on this list is St. Helena's Chapel of Ease. This chapel is located in South Carolina and is a ruin of its former self. A web Number four on this list is the St. Louis Cathedral, a beautiful church like many on this list, which is riddled with spirits. List first says, like the city it serves, the St. Louis Cathedral in New Orleans is a font of strange myths and legends. Originally built by the city's French rulers, the modern cathedral wasn't completed until the 1850s. According to lore, the ghosts of the old structure came along for the ride. One of the cathedral's better known ghosts, Père Dagobert, was an 18th century priest. Dagobert was renowned for his kindness, especially his willingness to treat the poor and terminal ill. During the 1760s, several members of his congregation decided to revolt against the city's new Spanish rulers. The mainly French and Creole rebels successfully pushed the initial Spanish force out of the city, but a larger force later managed to claim New Orleans for the Spanish king. Infuriated by the earlier rebellion, Irish Spanish governor Alejandro O'Reilly decided to not only execute the rebels, but also leave their rotting bodies on the doorstep of of the St. Louis Cathedral. As a devout Catholic, Degobert could not stand by while Catholic bodies were so roughly treated. After failing to get O'Reilly's permission to properly bury the bodies, Degobert led a funeral procession down to St. Peter's Cemetery and placed the slain men in unmarked graves. Degobert's successor, a Spanish priest named Pierre Antoine, is also said to haunt the cathedral. More intriguingly, Antoine's friend, voodoo priestess Mary Laveau, who often prayed at the church during her lifetime is also considered to be one of the many spirits inside the cathedral. So we got voodoo priestesses, unmarked haunted graves, multiple spirits of bodies that were buried improperly. This church is just one big mess. Many people think that there are also a bunch of other secrets that this place has that we don't know about. Like this was a spot for a secret society hundreds of years ago who performed some very questionable rituals and that's why this place is as haunted as it is. Whatever really happened here, we know it was dark and we know that it left its mark. Number three on this list is Egg Hill Church. This church was home to one of the worst tragedies a church has ever been host to. I've never been a real churchgoer myself, but from my understanding, love, life, spirituality, all of this is supposed to be in the air when you go and the whole reason for doing so. Death and hate and violence, that's all supposed to be left at the door. Pennsylvania's Egg Hill Church didn't quite do that. Instead, they invited death into the church on one particular Halloween night. Many years ago, the whole community gathered into the church on Halloween. The priest passed around bread and wine as is customary, but this bread and wine was a little off. In fact, it was very off. So off that everyone who had it died. It was poisoned. It's unknown whether the town had collectively decided to end their lives together that night or if this was all the priests doing, but either way, tens to hundreds of people's bodies lay lifeless on the ground when it was all said and done. Now, what are we left with? Well, the ghosts of all of these people, obviously. Even worse than that, the spirit of this evil priest still lingers here too, and apparently, he isn't done with the living. He's said to be very dangerous and wants to drag visitors down with him and take their life. This whole story is pretty much as dark as you can get, and it's no wonder the place is totally messed up today. Number two on this list is St. Nicholas Church. Hey, it's me. It just so happens that my church is haunted by a dozen spirits. Great. List first says, St. Nicholas Church is practically haunted by default. That's because the village of Pluckley, its home, is reputably the most haunted locale in all of England. The Kent village is home to the Watercrest woman, who occupies the Pinnock Bridge and to the ghost of a schoolmaster who committed 
died in front of his pupils. According to a conservative estimate, Pluckley contains no fewer than 12 active spirits. The church itself is said to be the home of both the beautiful ghost of Lady Daring and the Lady in Red, a ghost who searches the adjacent churchyard for her lost baby. The ghost of a former miller who worked in the area is also said to haunt the churchyard in search of a long lost love. Also, the ghost of a monk at nearby Greystone's house is also said to be seen during the night. Finally, visitors to St. Nicholas have reported seeing lights in the church's windows when no one was inside. So, we have another church with just a plethora of horrible things. Someone taking their own life, a missing ch a man who has lost his loved one? My question is, why did all of this happen at this one church? Like what really caused all of this to transpire in the first place? Are we just supposed to believe that it's all coincidence or is there actually something more afoot here? I think that's the real secret and sadly, I don't know if we're ever going to be able to find the true answer. And finally number one on this list is Saint Andres on the Red. Just that name alone on the red. Like, of course this place had to have some dark secrets. List first says, St. Andrews on the Red, completed in 1849, is located in the town of Selkirk, which is more or less a suburb of Winnipeg. It's the oldest stone church in western Canada, and it may be the region's most haunted thanks to the spirits of former plague victims. Other apparitions are said to populate the church's graveyard. Eyewitnesses have reported seeing a ghostly man clad in black and a mysterious woman in white. Also, a disembodied pair of red eyes have startled the visitors in the past, while a ghost car has been noted not far from the church's main entrance. If you're thinking about visiting the church or graveyard, be wary. Those who've claimed to have seen the various apparitions also reported having terrible nightmares the following nights. Most of these nightmares apparently involved the gates of the cemetery, which rattle even though no hands are seen shaking them. Some people can't shake these nightmares either. The occasional individual will have these persist for months or even years. I'm sure that the architecture and natural beauty is nice and all, but I'm not trying to risk nightmares for a year to see it. I do wonder what happened to those gates though. Is it some weird thing with the wind that's causing it, or is it what people suggest? Some type of ghostly intervention. I tend to think some sort of spirit has to be involved considering the thing with the nightmares happens as well, but you gotta wonder who. Sometimes I really do think that being a paranormal investigator would be awesome because you could get to the bottom of these things, but then again, that's a pretty unforgiving profession. Coming in at number 5 we have Orador Church in France. Located in central France, a few miles from Limoges lies a now abandoned town called Orador sur Glan. The town is now filled with empty houses, train lines that are out of order and a sign of tragedy, with roadside walls popped with bullet holes, fire marks, scorching stone houses, the church roof has gone through some massive explosion. This tragedy happened on June 10th 1944 when Adolf Dieckmann received information from members of the Vichy regime that SS officers had been captured and were being held by members of the French resistance at Orador Cerveiras. Diekman led his team to Orador Sir Glen intent on revenge. Whether he went to Orador Sir Glen instead of Orador Sir Veris on purpose or whether he mixed up the two towns because of the similarity in their names is something we will never know. The men of the village were quickly rounded up, then herded into a variety of surrounding barns and garages as the women and children were confined to the local church. Then a gas explosion was placed in the church and lit a flame. There was only a handful to survive the tragic accident that happened at the church of this town. With all the lives lost, in the church and surrounding town of that night, it is said to be haunted by many spirits. As some witnesses report as they stand at the church's windows at night, they see the dark spirits of the people who lost their lives walking through the ruined village's deserted streets. Out of the state, they often smell the aroma of burning wood and flesh as it lingers over this abandoned village. Until recently, the new residents would leave gifts along the border of the village of the martyred as a peace offering for the spirits that still haunt the church. In the end, we will never actually know the reason behind the attack upon the Orador church on June 10th 1944, though some think there was an evil entity or spirit upon the church that coerced the attack to happen. The site all about Beaufort, South Carolina writes, The chapel was destroyed in a horrendous forest fire that happened after the Civil War. Today the ruins of the chapel and a graveyard remain. The vault still remains out of order to this very day. The planters left St. Helena with the arrival of Union forces in 1861 and the church never regained its stature. 
Some stories relate that Union soldiers used it for services during the war, as well as Northerners who came to the area after the war to educate and train the former slave population. The door of the Fripp's vault was ruined by the soldiers and at some point it was decided to brick up the entrance. According to the story, workmen did a very good job of sealing the vault only to return the following day to find the bricks removed and neatly stacked beside the mausoleum. This had occurred many times. Convinced that the supernatural was at work, the job remained unfinished. Local authorities had assured that no one had been in the area the previous night long enough to complete such a task. Today the vault remains empty, the door is half sealed by bricks. One might find the experience of looking into the vacant vault more than a bit unsettling, if not downright eerie. Ever since that moment, regular ghostly sightings have been reported here. A woman dressed in 18th century clothing carrying a child through the graveyard is one of the most frequent apparitions that takes form. People have also talked about hearing people singing here even though they'll be completely by themselves. Usually these songs sound like church songs and are quite beautiful actually. Also just a general feeling of uneasiness has been reported at this spot very often. This place clearly has a very strong spiritual presence and I'd highly recommend giving a prayer before entering it. Number 3 on this list is Nidaros Cathedral. Located in Norway, this is referred to by locals as the most important Norwegian cathedral and also the most haunted. Taking a look at this thing on the outside, it's certainly very beautiful but also gives me some serious haunted vibes. And those vibes are well founded. The church was finished being built in 1300 and is directly in the center of the city of Trondheim. It's certainly been around for a large part of Norway's history, however the hauntings at this church have been pretty recent relative to how long it's been around. It all started in 1924 when Bishop Mary Gledich saw something pretty scary and gruesome. The ghost of a monk who had a massive slash directly across his neck. This monk has been spotted haunting the church ever since, but the weird thing is, nobody knows why. Historians have combed through Norway's history and can't seem to find a time that any order of monks would have stayed at this church. Now at the end of the day, this doesn't mean that having a ghost monk is impossible by any means. It's totally possible that a singular monk just happened to be at this church for some reason and through some tragedy died or by the nature of that cut was potentially murdered. Whatever his reasoning for being there, he certainly is. Many visitors have spotted him and some have said that they've seen him playing the organ in the church before. I personally can't imagine stumbling upon a monk whose throat is totally cut playing the organ. This is definitely one that deserves a prayer before entry. Number 2 on this list is St. Louis Cathedral. So we already talked about the Lady of Guadalupe Church but the only reason that church even exists is because of the St. Louis Church. Also located in New Orleans and arguably more haunted than the previous one. This church is interesting because one could argue that it's been around a lot longer than the other New Orleans one, but that also isn't necessarily true. That's because this is actually the fourth church to go up on this spot. Three previous times the church that was here has suffered serious damage that caused it to get replaced. One was from a hurricane that swept through the entire area and totally knocked the church to the ground. One was by a raging fire, and one was simply by wear and tear of being around for so many years. It was during one of the times that this place was in disrepair that that other church was built. Along with these incidents, it should also be noted that the church used to be used to bury some of New Orleans prominent figures. So when you walk through this church, you're literally walking over a ton of graves in the process. Through the deep history this church has, it's no wonder that ghostly sightings are a regular here. Perhaps the most famous ghost associated with St. Louis Cathedral is that of Pierre Antoine. Pierre was a Spanish Capuchin friar at the St. Louis Cathedral. He arrived in New Orleans in 1774 and was named pastor. His generosity and kindness to the people of New Orleans made him very popular. He was well liked by all of New Orleans. His death on January 19, 1829 was met with a somber and mourning city. He was laid to rest inside the St. Louis Cathedral three days after his death. Since his death in 1829, the ghost of Pierre Antoine has been seen in St. Louis Cathedral by an untold number of people. His ghost is easily recognized as there's a portrait of him inside the cathedral. It seems as if the ghost of Pierre Antoine especially likes to show himself around the holiday seasons. Commonly, the ghost of Pierre Antoine is seen near the altar and on the balconies. 
So guys, what I just read is from an article written by Ghost City Tours describing how serious this haunting is at this church. Apparently, Père Antoine isn't the only ghost either, but people have reported seeing the ghost of another pastor and some other apparitions of what looks to be people from the 1700s. Clearly, something about a New Orleans church is very attractive to the paranormal. And finally, number one on this list is the Abbey of the Black Hag. This church would be a tad bit difficult to pray before entering because there isn't too much left to enter. It's located in Ireland and is a ruin of its former self. This story starts many hundreds of years ago when this place was referred to as St. Catherine's Augustine Abbey. This place was established in 1298 and was pretty great right up until the last abbess took over. It's said that this woman practiced witchcraft here and brought great evil to the others that lived here and those nearby. Pope Martin V caught wind of this and ordered the immediate closure of this place. Everybody left, except for the witch. She stayed here completely by herself, practicing magic all day and all night. Eventually, through her consistent spell practicing, and probably the fact that she never bathed ever, her skin blackened to such a degree that people started referring to this place as the Abbey of the Black Hag. Apparently, this witch still resides here to this day, and the locals fear going here and risking her wrath. Tales have been told of livestock going missing, weird symbols appearing in the grounds, and even the occasional child wandering into this area, never to be heard from again. I feel like praying before you go to a place like this might not actually help that much. In fact, I'd just try avoiding it altogether if I was you.